Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, a typical security guard. I want to welcome you to today's episode of Security Guard Radio. Today, we're going to be talking about my top five tips for younger guards. What do we consider younger guards these days? I'd say like anybody under, let's say under 25, right? Under 25 is young. I can't believe how old I've gotten and that I'm on the other side of that equation. I used to be the young guy, it seems like, in every endeavor, and now I'm the I'm the old cat, right? But there are some things that I can I can give you guys in terms of advice that I think will be very helpful for you guys going forward. So this is going to be top five tips for younger guards in or getting into the security industry. Let's get right to it. Number five, develop communication skills. Now, when we talk about communication skills, this is something that is very, very applicable to younger guards you know when i was in school back in the day i think that was a wednesday (laughs) when i was a kid back in the day back in the 90s you know uh we still had to do cursive writing i don't know if you guys are even aware of what cursive writing is but you know we had to take writing classes and you had to personally and physically write your own papers i think that when i was in ninth grade was the first time that i had what was called a a word processing class and it was like a electric typewriter type john right type deal and um you know it was all about communication all about writing getting your point across being able to express yourself verbally written uh in written form and so for for this generation you know everything is done digitally and i understand the benefit of that i see the benefit of that in every aspect of society but the communication in terms of face to face one on one individual to individual a lot of that has kind of gone by the wayside because everything is done via social media everything is done via email you know you guys aren't really put in a position where you have to write you have to physically write a lot of information and you're not put into a position where you have to really deal with people face to face in a one-on-one environment you're not having to across the board communicate with people up front like you used to have to do back in the day and unfortunately when you're working in a security capacity your job puts you in direct communication with all kinds of people you're communicating with your staff you're communicating with the people on your team you're communicating with your co-workers you're communicating with those people at the contract site you're communicating with the people that you're dealing with that you have to move that you have to you know possibly detain or arrest you have to communicate with people that are for you know all intents and purposes are are maybe having the worst day of their life or doing something that has caused you to have to have an interaction with them. So if you're not in a position where you are comfortable communicating with people on all ends of the spectrum, you are going to struggle in this environment. And for a lot of you guys who want to move on to the police department, maybe the sheriff's department, work in a corrections capacity, the ability to communicate with people across the board is so important. So in 2024 i want you guys to make your development of communication skills orally written and in any other capacity i want you to make that a priority for you guys okay number four would be to focus on professionalism i think that if you're in the security space the thought of training on tactics the thought of training on firearms or defensive tactics or handcuffing all of the the cool tactical things it's not difficult to get you younger guards and i say that respectfully right it's not difficult to get you guys to put time into that but what's going to get you guys and 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 put you in a position to maintain high paying contracts is your ability to be professional now when we talk about professionalism what exactly are we talking about this would be how you interact with people this would be how you carry yourself how you present yourself and everything from your your dress and appearance to your decorum your ability to interact with people at a corporate level or people that are at maybe say a legislative or a leadership level within your your county or your state all of these things play into the opportunities that are going to be presented to you 
to be able to move and advance within the security industry and within law enforcement. So if you can put the premium that you normally put on firearms and everything else that's tactical into your professionalism, you will find that down the road, I can't guarantee it's going to happen soon for you, but down the road, your ability to make more money and work in way higher status positions will be greater than if you don't do that. Number three is going to be to stay updated on security trends. Now, when I'm talking about security trends, I'm not talking about things within the industry that are at your level. What I want you guys to start focusing on are the trends that are happening at the state and legal level. This would be what are the firearms regulations and ordinances that are coming down in your county, in your city, in your state? What are some of the things that are happening in terms of the legislative processes um, that are going to affect security in general? Things like what you wear, things like your access to body armor, things like magazine capacities. Those are the things that too often younger guards at the lower level of the rank and file structure are unaware of. In 2024, in today's political climate, in today's climate around firearms ownership, the idea that you are not politically involved and politically aware is no longer okay because it affects us, guys. It affects us in terms of what we do with our work, but also it could put you in a position where you are legally liable or responsible for something that maybe you didn't even know about. OK, so get involved, start looking into the laws from everything from security to, to to firearms to use of force, all of that stuff. You have to be aware of these things. Right. Number two is going to be staying physically fit for you guys who are under the age of 25. This is generally not something that you have to worry about. You got a lot of testosterone going through your body. I remember those days, right? Some of you guys, you wake up, you get out of bed and you're ripped, you're jacked, you're in great shape. You can lift weights still. You know, you're probably playing some sort of sport or maybe you're working out with the guys like you're in great shape because you're young. But I can tell you from firsthand experience that 20 years goes by faster than you think. And all of the injuries, the back injuries, the foot injuries, the shoulder problems, everything that you're going to experience in middle age, it is coming. It's coming for you. I guarantee you it's coming for you and you can't avoid it. But what you can do is you can prolong it. And the way that you prolong it is by working out now and staying in shape. Now, the more you can stay in shape and on top of your health and your physical fitness in your 20s, the less you will have issues in your 30s and your 40s. Number one, and most importantly, take advice and learn from experienced guards. A lot of the people that you're working with in the security industry, they're former law enforcement. Some of them are former military. These guys, even if they've just been in the security field, they've been doing this for years. Listen to them. Take their advice. Do not take every piece of advice or every piece of you know helpful criticism as negative let them teach you let them lead you let them guide you because if you listen to some of these people and you take the advice of some of those guys who have been there before it will help you to navigate and mitigate a lot of situations that can get you jammed up in the game and if your goal is to move into law enforcement, if your goal is to move into private contracting, these are the guys who can get you there, right? So as a young guy, don't do what I have done in my life, what I have done in my past, which is burn bridges with people that could have helped me, which is butt heads with people that could have put me in much better positions to be successful much earlier in life. Don't be like me. Do the exact opposite. Listen, be humble. Take the advice, right? Take the criticism and make changes. Do what you can to ingratiate yourself with these people that can set you up to be successful way further down the road than you can imagine. Listen to these guys. There's a lot of a lot of helpful information out there. Now, that comes with also having some discernment. 
and knowing who not to listen to, knowing who not to follow. But I'm confident that you guys at 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, that you can smell bullshit at this level, right? Even at this young age. But more importantly, do take that advice from those guys who have been there before. Guys, these are my top five tips for younger security guards. I want to know what you think. Do you agree that these are things that you should be doing? Or do you have your own helpful information that you can drop in the comments to help that younger guard, that newer guard that's coming up in the ranks to be successful? Remember, this is a community. It's not about me. It's about us. Guys, listen, as always, I want to thank you for being a part of what we're doing here. I want to thank you for being a part of this platform. I want you to go out there and do your absolute best job, but I want you to keep your head on the swivel and I want you to be safe. Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, be great. All right, guys, take care. Be great.